an honor to share communion with you today. I'm working for my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me, a one-year communion devotional. This is week 33, The Blood of Sprinkling, Hebrews 12, 24. Did you know that blood has a voice? Blood speaks and blood cries out. The first children of the human race were already a part of a fallen race. Abel and Cain were brothers out of the womb of Eve. Although Abel was a fallen man, he offered to God the firstlings of his flock and their fat. In other words, he offered the first and the best. God was pleased with his offering because Abel offered it by faith. He learned from his father Adam that the bridge to God was spanned with the shed blood of an innocent animal. Now Cain offered some fruit from the ground. His sacrifice wasn't a sacrifice at all. I believe that he offered it begrudgingly. At best, he went through the motions, the M.O. of religion. The fruit was the byproduct of the sweat of his brow and the works of his hands. We cannot earn a relationship with God. It is freely given to us through the shedding of blood. Now, God did not respect Cain's offering, and Cain became angry with God and jealous of Abel. God confronted Cain about his attitude. He admonished him to rule over sin. If we don't rule over sin, it's waiting at the door to cause us to stumble into a life of darkness, a life of shadiness and obscurity. Now, on a certain day, Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and he rose up and killed him. God questioned Cain about the whereabouts of his brother Abel. The fallen nature of man found free expression in Cain. He lied to God and said he did not know the whereabouts of his brother. Then he asked God a question punctuated with contempt. He made a statement about his life in the form of a question. Am I my brother's keeper? In response, God informed Cain that Abel's blood was expressing itself as well. Jesus referred to him as righteous Abel in Matthew 23, 35. Let's look at Genesis 4, 10. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The ground was unwillingly obliged to drink the blood of Abel. From the ground, the voice of Abel's blood carried a message. It was a cry for retribution. Now let us fast forward to Hebrews 12, 24. This verse makes reference to the blood of Abel and the blood of Christ in one verse. Let's read it from the Amplified. And to Jesus, the mediator, go between agent of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy, a better and nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel which cried out for vengeance. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. As we partake of communion, we remember that Jesus gave his very life for each of us. God was merciful to us. I can relate to the tax collector who approached Jesus with humility. The Pharisee, a very religious man, boasted about himself and degraded his fellow man. But the publican wouldn't even approach Jesus. He knew he had no business in his presence aside from the mercy of God. Listen to Luke 8, 13 through 14. 18, 13 through 14. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross to release mercy to us. He got what we deserved so we could get what we didn't deserve. We deserved retribution, but instead we were pardoned. We deserved vengeance, but instead we were forgiven. We deserved to be eternally damned, but by his mercy he saved us. We should have been left for dead in our trespasses and sins, but God is rich in mercy and made us alive together with Christ. We should have been found guilty but we were declared innocent. We should have been required to approach the judgment seat to receive our punishment. Instead, we can approach the mercy seat to experience God's compassion. What is the extent of God's incomprehensible love delivered through Christ Jesus? What is the message of his blood that speaks better things than that of Abel? Ephesians 2, 4 through 6, the Living Bible. But God is so rich in mercy. He loved us so much that even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sins, he gave us back our lives again. When he raised Christ from the dead, only by his undeserved favor have we ever been saved. 
and lifted us up from the grave into glory along with Christ, where we sit with him in the heavenly realms, all because of what Christ Jesus did. As we consume the cup and the bread today, we're dumbfounded by the mercy of God, which prevents us from being consumed. Every morning, we should rise and thank God for his mercies because they're new every morning. We get a fresh start every day with God. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23, the New Century Version. The Lord's love never ends. His mercies never stop. They're anew every morning. Lord, your loyalty is great. Another translation says, great is your faithfulness. Now, I gave my life to the Lord on May 26, 1980, and I was a drummer for a rock and roll band. We were on the road constantly living the lifestyle, and I know I didn't deserve to be saved. I'm aware of it constantly, even to this day. I didn't know then that God makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. Now, when I take communion, the blood speaks to me. It reminds me again that God loves me unconditionally. He loved me before I loved him. Jesus took his blood into God's inner room and sprinkled it on the mercy seat. In so doing, he secured the salvation of a wretch like me who lived his life making fun of God and Christians. May I remind you today that through one man's obedience, many are made righteous. It's all because of what Jesus did. Let's partake together thanking Jesus that his blood cried out for mercy. Father, we thank you today for the shedding of your blood that saved a wretch like me. And God, I speak for many others, God, who could say, I didn't deserve what you gave me, but you shed your blood for me and you, your body was broken for me. I thank you, God, today that I can stand before you and in your presence without any sense of guilt, shame, or condemnation. Let's partake together.